tend to think of cars in either premium or volume terms. Here, though, is one that could comfortably fit within either definition, the 8th generation Volkswagen Passat. Though targeted at the medium-range Mondeo sector, it's long had an appeal stretching beyond, up towards the premium compact executive saloon segment. Global buyers like that, and the result is a worldwide favourite the Wolfsburg maker simply can't afford to get wrong. Hence the smarter looks, extra technology and efficient returns of this classy Mark 8 model. Volkswagen creates cars for people who will buy them. And the people who will buy this Passat, medium range Mondeo class customers looking for higher quality, well, they're usually very sure of what they want. More style better comfort and lower running costs, all of which this 8th generation model claims to deliver. We didn't set out to build a new car, the company says. We set out to build a new Passat. The difference is important. While other manufacturers have been persuaded that models of this kind should be able to drive on their door handles, Volkswagen knows what its customer base really needs. A car that will lower the heartbeat rather than raise it. And as with any company that really knows its market, the rewards have been considerable. Today, as every day, over 3,000 new Passats will be sold across the world, with a new owner taking delivery every 29 seconds. Over 1.1 million of them leave the showrooms each year, making this the company's best-selling global model. Now, with annual sales that amount to more than the entire yearly production output of BMW or Audi, it's a phenomenon. No longer simply an integral part of the Volkswagen range, it's now pretty much a brand in itself. The danger of such success is that it can result in an overly conservative approach when the time comes for changes. Now, this was certainly true of this car's direct predecessor, which inherited much from the previous generation version. This time around, though, the Wolfsburg maker has brought us a completely fresh design. It had to really, given that all the modern Volkswagens these days sit on a very different platform. It's the light, stiff and very clever MQB chassis that we first saw used on the seventh generation Golf. That's important as it allows this car to become sharper, cleverer and more efficient. So whether you choose saloon or estate, this Mark 8 model claims to be more responsive at the wheel. It can think for itself, even performing parking manoeuvres with or without a trailer. And it can return the kinds of running cost figures you'd expect from a small super mini. Plus you've the option of in-car connectivity, virtual dials and even plug-in hybrid technology. Is it all enough to keep this car ahead of the chasing pack? It's time to find out. Volkswagen is very good at creating a premium driving experience. It always has been with the Passat. This time round though, can relaxed comfort be matched with more of a dynamic drive? More to the point perhaps, does it really need to be? We'd say it does. Rivals like Ford's fourth generation Mondeo have raised the bar in this segment, proving that a car of this class can be both comfortable and rewarding. And with this eighth generation Passat, it was time for the Wolfsburg maker to respond. So, has it? Well, in Volkswagen terms, yes. Where the previous versions of this model was merely uh, soft and unmemorable in its approach to a twisting road, this one feels sharper and more responsive, with accurate, precise steering that inspires confidence. Particularly if you specify the progressive steering system that sportier versions offer as an option, and the XDS electronic differential lock system that aids corner turn-in. Both features are good to have, but they don't transform this car into one you'd go and drive just for the pleasure of doing so. Indeed, typical owners would probably be mystified by such a thought. For them, a model of this kind is there for the journey, not for the way it should be driven. Those who disagree and find themselves in search of a car in this sector will find that a Mondeo or a Mazda 6 will better suit their needs. 
Even if you're minded to prefer a car of that sort, it's always worth trying this one, for its other attributes are telling. On a typical British B-Road, this Passat just flows beautifully. Yes, there's a touch more body roll than some rivals exhibit, but for the most part it's expertly disguised by a supple, languid rhythm that soon has you covering ground in a quick, safe and relaxing manner. Long distances just melt away in Jaguar or Lexus-like style, helped by the exemplary refinement and the superbly supportive Ergo Comfort seats. Now, think in terms of a model that's smooth, refined and low stress in this segment, and you'd have to start here first. It's a formula Volkswagen have perfected over the years with this car, and they'd be mad to divert from it. The Wolfsburg maker does, though, invite a little more driver involvement in the whole dynamic process these days. Now, take the so-called driver profile selection system that's standard across the range, provided you uh, avoid the entry level trim. Operable via the center dash infotainment touchscreen, this duplicates sister brand Audi's drive select setup in the way that it alters the throttle mapping, steering, auto gearbox response, and engine management to suit your chosen driving style via four available programs eco sport normal and individual now there's also a fifth mode comfort if as here you opt for the extra cost dcc dynamic chassis control active damping system that also allows you to set the right quality to suit your preferences but will many typical passat owners really want to do all that on a regular basis Probably not. Now, the driver profile selection feature is worth having, but whether it's worth embellishing it with active damping is more debatable. After all, the standard ride package doesn't really need fiddling with, almost class leading as it is over poor and broken surfaces. Owners of previous models might be a little surprised at this, given that this eighth generation version is a little sharper to drive than before, but it's all down to the attributes of this improved design's stiffer and more sophisticated MQB chassis. On to what lies beneath the bonnet, which will almost certainly be a diesel, given that all mainstream models now are TDI powered to suit the current preference in this market segment. Now at entry level, there's a 120 PS 1.6 litre diesel power plant. It's really better suited to something golf size, given its modest 250 Newton meter reserve of pulling power. As a result, it needs to be worked quite a bit harder, but is acceptably rapid when it is. A 62 miles per hour, occupying 10.8 seconds en route to 128 miles per hour. Now that's assuming you order the six-speed manual version. We'd suggest you don't. This car feels a classier and more relaxed proposition with an automatic swapping the cogs for you, especially one as smooth and flexible as the twin-clutched DSG unit on offer here. If you're minded to follow this advice, a bit of product knowledge will help, for your dealer may not tell you that when it comes to mainstream models, only the 1.6 litre TDI variant can deliver the win-win scenario of automatic motoring with no efficiency downsides. It gets Volkswagen's modern seven-speed DSG automatic box as an option, whereas the two litre TDI Passat model most will probably want carries over the older, less efficient six-speed DSG automatic transmission transmission from the previous generation range. Now I'm using this less desirable auto box here mainly because most will want it on the 2 litre TDI 190 PS model variant that Volkswagen has given me to try. This engine makes for a pretty rapid business conveyance, 62 miles per hour occupying 7.7 .7 seconds on the way to 146 miles per hour. But in the real world, I'd expect that the figures of the lesser 150 PS 2 litre TDI variant, 8.7 seconds and 136 miles per hour will be sufficient for most. Those that do need ultimate Passat performance will need deep pockets or an understanding fleet manager for a big price jump is required to get yourself into what for many will be the flagship of the range, the 240 PS twin turbo 2 liter by TDI variant. Now partly that's uh, due to Volkswagen's decision to equip this top model with standard four motion permanent four wheel drive, the seven speed DSG auto gearbox, plus a sizable part of the options list. 
As a luxurious tow vehicle though, it would probably be a car with few equals, particularly in estate guys. I'd want mine in all track spec. Now this SUV style trim level designating a slightly raised ride height and a modicum of off-road ability. By TDI models get to 62 miles per hour in just 6.1 seconds en route to a top speed of 149 miles per hour. But more pertinent is the 500 newton meter torque figure, allowing this variant to pull a braked trailer weighing up to 2,200 kilograms, up a 12% incline in almost any weather. With the ordinary single turbo 2 liter TDI models, you can tow up to 2,000 kilograms. Either way, if you regularly haul stuff about, you'll want to look at the optional trailer assist system that can automatically steer you backwards when you're trying to park up. Now, if you're as bad at doing that as I am, then that feature will indeed be a godsend. Finally, a word about a key Passat variant that isn't diesel powered, the super clever GTE plug-in hybrid model. This uses a six-speed DSG auto gearbox and mates a 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine with the 150 PS electric motor and a 9.9 kWh lithium ion battery for a combined output that can be as much as 218 PS, providing you opt to drive the car in the dynamic GTE mode it offers for those times when you've a need for speed. In these moments, 62 miles per hour will be under eight seconds away, en route to over 136 miles per hour. When efficiency can take priority over performance, you simply just switch into the all-electric E-mode setting. In that mode, the car can cover up to 31 miles on battery power alone. Now that's providing the cells are fully charged up, of course, a process that can be completed in as little as two hours and 15 minutes, assuming that at home or at work, you've installed the optional wall box charger that Volkswagen offers. The Passat has never been a trendy follower of fashion. Rarely has this model ever caused heads to turn or hearts to miss a beat. For all that though, it's remained quietly fashionable throughout seven generations and five decades of life with understated yet sophisticated styling that confidently holds its own in almost any company car park. Though the approach of this Mark 8 model is much the same, it's also a more dynamic thing than before. A car indeed you might even prefer over its stablemate, the swoopier Passat CC four-door coupe. Whether you opt for this model in this saloon form or in estate guise, it's certainly a design that refuses to be intimidated by any of its rivals. The front end is particularly sleek with a swept back windscreen and a lower bonnet line that blends into a smarter grille featuring four chrome bars that bend inwards towards the headlights in a trapezoidal shape. Now, the idea is to emphasize the car's width and create a lower, wider, more expensive look. An objective confirmed by stats revealing a 14 mm drop in overall height and a 12 mm increase in width in comparison to the previous model. Now, in an industry that usually tends to make each new model a little larger than its predecessor, you might be surprised to learn that this eighth generation design is two millimeters shorter than before too. The effect of this perhaps more clearly evident as you move around to the side. Probably the most obvious change lies with the shorter overhangs emphasizing the way that the wheels have been moved further towards the corners of the car to suit this Mark 8 model's wider track. Now Volkswagen's head of design Klaus Bischoff has seen to it that the flanks have a bit more shape in them this time round too. All sharp angles and chamfered edges with the profile nicely set off by this sharp character line that runs from front to rear precisely bisecting the door handles. At the rear in this saloon version, flared shoulders transition to a large boot lid that continues the low and white styling theme, with wider, leaner lights sitting above a distinctive crease that extends across the car. Now the lamps are LED lit and spring into a striking vertical line of illumination when activated. Go for the estate and there's 21 millimeters of extra height, but the stance remains purposeful. There's no extra length for estate buyers though in a body style that sits on exactly the same wheelbase as this saloon. Which brings me to the underpinnings of this design. The thing that's probably most significant about it. 
This Passat is the first to sit on the Volkswagen Group's clever MQB or modular transverse matrix platform, a chassis that's far stiffer than before, yet is also light enough to make a major contribution to the 85 kilogram weight saving that this car enjoys over its predecessor. Time to move inside. Now, many Volkswagen Group cars tend to sell on the upfront experience that they offer, and this one's no different. Different, though, might be a good word to describe the style of the minimalist dashboard. It's dominated by one long air vent with sleek, integrated chrome fins that extends across the entire width of the interior like a band. It's interrupted only by the instruments and the smart analog clock in the center of the fascia. Now, below that lies the expected infotainment screen, 6.5 inches in size as standard, or 8 inches if you opt for the Discover Pro sat nav system that I have here that can link with clever volts. Volkswagen CarNet connectivity to create a Wi-Fi hotspot within the car. There's no question that this is a high-end place to be. Forget comparisons with Mondeo and Insignia segment rivals, what we have here is a cabin every bit as good as what you'd find in a far pricier compact executive saloon like Audi's A4 or BMW's 3 Series. The usual brushed aluminium trim, satin chrome switchgear and piano black inlays feature and build quality from the German Emden factory is pretty predictably faultless. The doors closing with a quality thump you'd only get from a premium design. Actually though, it's the little touches that really make the difference. Things like the quality of the touch points, the lovely door mirror puddle lights and these superbly supportive Ergo Comfort seats. But just to make sure though, Volkswagen has gone the extra mile with technology. So for example, the climate control system switches into air recirculation mode when the sat nav informs it that you've entered a tunnel. And you get the option of replacing the smart but conventional instrument dials with an active info display, a 12.3 inch TFT virtual layout that aims to create a more interactive driving experience. Most notably in the way that it can bring full color sat nav mapping between the main gauges. It's all there to subtly reinforce the impression that Volkswagen has gone beyond the call this time round. Even the storage cubbies are flock lined, part of a practical roster that includes big door pockets, a decently sized glove box, and on most models, twin cup holders on the transmission tunnel. Take a seat in the rear and the surprise lies in the fact that despite this Mark 8 model's reduction in exterior length and height, it actually feels more spacious than its predecessor. It is too, with more room for legs and heads thanks to a lengthier wheelbase that's enabled Volkswagen's designers to package this car more effectively. Now the extra 12 millimeter of width this time round makes it a little easier for three adults to be accommodated in here. Though this prominent raised center transmission tunnel will still make life restrictive for the middle seat occupant. Out back, the 586 litre boot is class leading in size, 21 litres larger than before and now 10% bigger than that of an Insignia and 20% larger than that provided by a rival Ford Mondeo. And if you're looking at something like a BMW 3 Series saloon, you'd get just 480 litres. Now, should you want to extend this space, you'll have to avoid entry-level trim, which rather meanly deletes the folding rear bench option. But assuming that you have it, then 1,152 litres of space can be opened up using these very useful boot levers. Now the estate model is of course more spacious still. Its boot, also significantly bigger than before, offering a full 650 litres of space up to tonneau cover level. Now drop the rear bench and a total of 1,780 litres of fresh air can be opened up. Now, bear that in mind if you're tempted by a comparable Audi A4 Avant, where the respective capacity totals are limited to just 490 and 1430 litres. As ever with the Passat, there's a choice of either saloon or estate body styles, and this time round, the engine choice is primarily diesel-based.
The pricing lies largely in the £22,000 to £30,000 bracket, which is common to most models in the Mondeo-sized medium-range sector. Though if you were to opt for a top 2-litre by TDI 4Motion variant, you could conceivably pay up to £37,000 or so for one, and potentially even more if you were to choose the high-tech GTE petrol-electric plug-in hybrid version. Now that by TDI flagship diesel model comes only with the 7-speed DSG automatic gearbox that you can also specify as a £1,600 option on the base 1.6-litre TDI variant that many will want. Now go for the mid-range 2-litre TDI we have here though and the Auto Premium only buys you a 6-speed DSG box. And if, like 51% of Passat buyers, you require the estate body style I mentioned, you'll have a model for model premium of around £1,500 to find. On to the value proposition all of that represents. Now, as it has done with previous generation versions of this car, Volkswagen is suggesting that it's premium enough to offer a viable alternative to the kind of slightly smaller but posher BMW 3 Series or Audi A4 style compact executive models that in comparable form would cost you around £7,000 more. Now, while we'd agree that of all volume medium range sector contenders you could choose, this one comes closest to achieving that goal. It's still a mainstream Mondeo segment competitor at heart, and here we're going to treat it as such. I mentioned the Mondeo. In much improved fourth generation form, the Ford is probably this car's biggest rival. And like the sector's other main player, Vauxhall's Insignia, generally manages to undercut this Volkswagen by at least a couple of thousand pounds in model for model terms. Now, you lose much of that saving, though, when it comes to the low residual values that a Ford or a Vauxhall will give you. Which is why the kinds of figures that you'll get quoted on leasing or contract hire agreements sometimes don't tend to vary too much between these three cars. Of course, there are other options you could look at in this segment, but to be frank, all have issues. Now, the Mazda 6 would potentially be a good choice if it was offered with the kind of lower powered diesels that most buyers would want in this kind of car, but it isn't. Peugeot's improved 508 does provide that option, but further up the range. Now, the clean and frugal blue HDI engines it offers, the ones most buyers will want, are priced well above comparable Passat models. Now, otherwise, you're left with more marginal segment players like Toyota's Avensis, Hyundai's i40 and Kia's Optima. Any one of these will save you quite a lot over this Volkswagen's asking price, but running costs will be significantly higher. Then there are those strong Passat residuals to consider. If, having considered all of this, you conclude that it is a Passat that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Volkswagen has been with standard equipment. The brand has had to make a lot more effort in this respect with its more recent models, and uh, sure enough, even in entry-level S trim, your Passat will come complete with 16-inch alloy wheels, daytime running lights, LED tail lamps and an alarm. Inside, there's keyless start, brushed chrome dash inserts, air conditioning, a trip computer and a leather-trimmed multifunction steering wheel from which you can control a high-quality 8-speaker DAB stereo system. The main functions for this can be found on the dashboard's 6.5-inch central colour touchscreen, which also gives you Bluetooth phone compatibility and an SD card slot. Plus, the display can read and send SMS messages if you've got an Android phone. All well and good, but if you do buy in at S specification, you will find a few key items to be missing. Things like the driver profile selection system that enables you to set up the car to the way that you want to drive, and the folding rear bench that allows you to extend the boot. Plus, there are features absent at entry level that you will probably want on a car like this, like parking sensors, cruise control and folding mirrors. Now, all of this stuff comes included if, like most buyers, you're prepared to find a model for model premium of around £1,100 and graduate up to SE spec. Now, this level also entitles you to larger 17-inch alloy wheels, a bit of extra chromed window trim, LED reading lights, an auto-dimming rearview mirror, auto headlamps and wipers, and perhaps more significantly a pair of superb ergo comfort seats up front that on their own will justify a lot of the additional cost if you're going to be clocking up the miles in this car. 
if you want to go further up and find yourself eyeing up pricier models like the GT variant I have here, or indeed pursuing the lengthy options list, then you really can go to town. GT Folk get 18-inch alloy wheels, front fog lights that turn with the bends, gloss black B-pillars, a three-zone climate control system, heated seats, piano black trim inserts, a multifunction instrument binnacle display, and smart ambient cabin lighting. Now, the Discover sat-nav system that's an option at SE level also comes as standard for GT Folk, complete with a larger 8-inch screen that allows 2D or 3D map views and a traffic sign display that picture signs as you pass them and shows them on the dash. The Discover system can be combined with Volkswagen's CarNet package of online services which allow you to create in your car a smartphone compatible Wi-Fi hotspot from which you can explore your area with Google Earth. You can get even better orientation via Google Street View and have all the latest traffic news beamed directly into your car. Now, CarNet also includes a very useful guide and inform package. Now, this allows you to research your destination on a home or office PC via a an online customer portal before you set off, then transfer the information to the car. Then on the journey, the guide and inform system can keep you updated on the nearest fuel stations and parking spaces along your route, and if necessary, guide you to one. This setup can also include voice control and a clever mirror link function that mirrors your smartphone display on the infotainment touchscreen. Now, mirror link then allows you to operate your smartphone remotely using the infotainment system display. Or if you download a Media Control Plus app on your handset, the infotainment system can be remotely operated by passengers anywhere in the car. So, for example, kids sitting in the back can alter the stereo volume using their phones. Now, there's a feature I wouldn't want. What I would go for is Volkswagen's Advanced Telephone Connection Package, a setup that charges your phone and boosts its reception through the car's external area. For me, that's one must-have. Now, another is the really clever active info display. Now, this completely replaces the traditional dials with a fully configurable 12.3-inch TFT screen that can bring almost everything you need to know from sat-nav mapping to phone information more directly into your line of sight. With that fitted, I don't really think you'd need to consider the optional head-up display that projects key driving information onto an extendable glass panel that rises at the bottom of the windscreen. Other extra cost features you might also want to look at include the LED headlights I have in upspec premium form here. Plus, there's a panoramic sunroof or an area view camera system that uses front, rear and side cameras to give you a 360 degree view of the car and help when manoeuvring. Now, that's a good match, by the way, for the park assist system that will automatically steer you into spaces. Or you could simply spend any extra budget on something less practical like the 10-speaker, 10-channel, 700-watt Dynaudio sound system or the electrically-powered massaging seats. Now, an upholstery upgrade might also be appealing. With this car, the Napa leather that this includes comes packaged with laminated sound insulating glass. And beyond that, well, fripperies like a heated steering wheel, a powered boot lid or wood trim you could probably do without. But practical touches like a luggage net for the boot, a load compartment liner, roof bars and a bicycle rack are certainly all worth considering. And particularly if you're looking at the estate model. There are also some dynamic options you should certainly take into account. It's a pity that with most variants you have to pay a little more for the XDS electronic differential lock system that makes such a difference to traction and handling. Make sure you take the box for us. Now we also like the progressive steering system that comes as part of a sport pack on all line models. Now without you noticing, it's designed to reduce the amount of lock that you have to put in through the corners and makes the fairly light helm slick and unerringly accurate. Less essential is the DCC, Dynamic Chassis Control setup that we've been trying here that allows you to adjust the ride to suit the mood you're in and the road that you're on. It's a much better option than paying extra for stiffer sports suspension though. Estate car folk may also particularly want the trailer assist system that includes a rear view camera and helps you to hook up to and reverse with something that you're towing, automatically controlling the difficult bit. 
the steering. For anyone who's ever made a complete mess of reversing a trailer in front of an audience, that will be well worth the asking price. On to safety, provision for which has attracted a five-star Euro NCAP test rating. Now, the standard tally here runs to twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag, anti-whiplash head restraints and Isofix child seat fastenings. Now, the usual electronic driving aids run to ESC stability control, ASR traction control, EDTC, engine drag torque control and anti-lock brakes with brake assist for emergency stops. Now, there's also an automatic post-collision braking system that, after an impact, will instantly appear apply the brakes to reduce the possibility of the car spinning on to hit something else. Plus, all Passats get tyre pressure sensors, a hill hold function to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions, and a driver alert system that'll warn you if sensors detect drowsiness. Now, provided you avoid entry-level trim, this Volkswagen also comes with several other key safety features. There's adaptive cruise control, which automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car ahead on the highway and uses the same camera for a city emergency braking system that at speeds of up to 18 miles per hour scans the road ahead as you drive for potential vehicle collision hazards. Now, if one is detected, you'll be warned. And if you don't respond or aren't able to, the brakes will be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Now, by that point, a pre-crash prevention occupant protection package will have also cut in. Now, this prepares the car to help you survive an impact if the car sensors deem a collision to be inevitable. And that will mean your belts will be instantly pre-tensioned, while the windows and the sunroof, if fitted, will be immediately closed. So much for the standard safety stuff. Now, as you've seen, across most of the range, the provision here is pretty comprehensive. As usual, though, it is possible to go much further, primarily through optioning up your car with one of the driver's assistance packs. Now, the standard one includes high beam assist headlamps that dip themselves at night, lane assist to warn dozy drivers who are veering out of their lanes on the highway, and a side scan feature that stops you from dangerously pulling out uh, to overtake another car. Now, most importantly, there's predictive pedestrian protection, a system that works like the city emergency braking setup that I described earlier, but in this case is specifically tasked with identifying pedestrians who have strayed close to or right into the road ahead. These are all useful features, and for only a fraction more, you can upgrade to the Driver's Assistant Pack Plus pack that's fitted to the car that I have here. Now, with this, you get everything previously mentioned, as well as a traffic jam assist feature that allow comfortable automated driving and stop-and-go traffic at speeds of up to 37 miles per hour while staying in lane. And emergency assist that will take over completely should you be incapable of driving, say if you fall asleep or have a heart attack. Now, in such situations, the Passat will automatically apply its hazard warning flashers and bring itself to a controlled stop within its lane. That's all very reassuring. You'd expect a model lineup majoring on efficient EU6 compliant diesel engines to offer frugal running costs. And by and large, this one doesn't disappoint. As well as thanks mainly to the cleverness of its high tech MQB platform. The unladen weight of this Mark 8 model has been reduced by 85 kilograms, an attribute which combines with the benefits of the blue motion technology that Volkswagen has applied across the range. This means that all variants get brake energy recuperation so that energy is recovered when slowing down or braking. Plus, there's also an automatic stop-start system fitted that will cut the engine when you don't need it, say, stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. As a result of all of this, along with a sleeker shape that's 5% more slippery than before, fuel economy figures across the board have improved by as much as 14%. In some ways, that's not quite enough. Even if at first glance, the standard entry level 1.6 litre TDI 120 PS version looks pretty efficient. It's managing 70.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 105 grams per kilometre of CO2 in saloon guys. 
In perspective though, that showing still leaves this Volkswagen about 10% adrift of its two key direct rivals. Ford's Mondeo 1.6 TDCI, 115 PS Econetic, and Vauxhall's Insignia 2 liter CDI Ecoflex 120 PS. Now, both of these competitors record combined consumption figures of over 75 miles per gallon and can dip beneath the all important 100 grams per kilometer CO2 barrier. Now, to be fair, a Passat can do that too, but it needs more than basic blue motion technology to do it. So the German brand has gone further and developed a full eco-conscious blue motion model that adds in a whole range of other efficiency touches. Things like aerodynamic modifications, unique spoilers, lowered suspension and a modified radiator grill. As a result of all of that, the combined cycle figures improves to 78 miles per gallon, while the CO2 return is enhanced to 95 grams per kilometer. Now, it would have been simpler all round and easier for buyers to understand if Volkswagen could have just built this efficiency into the standard car. Rightly though, the brand points out that most Passat sales are made at pokier 2 litre TDI level. Here, sure enough, the car is more than a match for the best of its rivals on the balance sheets, and that's thanks to the fact that, very impressively, a 2 litre TDI version of this Volkswagen will be no dirtier and will cost you no more to run than a Fiber 1.6 litre TDI model. Now that makes the 2 litre TDI variants 70.6 mile per gallon combined cycle fuel figure class leading, and the 106 grams per kilometer CO2 figures pretty good as well. Where the standard 1.6 and 2 litre TDI diesel variants do differ is when you come to equip them with automatic transmission. Adding such a DSG box, a modern 7 speeder to the base 1.6 TDI model affects your figures not one jot. But for reasons best known to Volkswagen, the 2 litre unit is still saddled with the brand's older, less efficient 6 speed DSG auto that will hit your returns by around 10%. Now that could make a difference to your tax payments too. Here I'm actually driving a 2 litre TDI Passat, but in this case the Pokier 190 PS version of the engine. Like the lesser 2 litre TDI unit, the automatic version of this one has the older 6 speed DSG box, which drops the 2 litre TDI 190 manual models figures 61.4 miles per gallon and 107 grams per kilometre of CO2 down to a less remarkable 57.6 miles per gallon and 119 grams per kilometre of CO2. Beyond that, you'll be looking at the DSG Auto only 240 PS 2 litre by TDI variant. Here the returns are rated at 53.3 miles per gallon and 139 grams per kilometre. Bear in mind that the figures that I've quoted will, as usual, be fractionally affected if you go for the heavier estate body style. And, as you'd expect, will slightly fall again if you're tempted by the larger optional alloy wheels. The figures will also of course fall if as a driver you don't do your part and keep an eye on features like the gear shift indicator provided on the dash. Now if your car is fitted with the driver profile selection system, you'll want to remember to keep that in its most efficient eco mode on a regular basis. Here the engine management, air conditioning and ancillary systems will all be controlled for maximum efficiency. There's also an eco function on the central infotainment screen to aid more frugal driving. And Passat owners who want to go further and have specified the Discover Navigation Pro infotainment system will also want to download the clever Think Blue Trainer app, which proactively coaches you with eco driving tips. All well and good, but I can't though finish the discussion on this topic without mentioning the most frugal and efficient Passat that you can buy. A car, as you might be surprised to learn, isn't part of the diesel range I've been talking about up until now. I'm talking of the Passat GTE plug-in hybrid model, which makes a 1.4 litre TSI petrol engine with a 15 PS electric motor for a combined output that can be as much as 218 PS. This car's quoted figures, 141 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 45 grams per kilometre of CO2 are probably unachievable in the real world, but it's still clearly going to be an impressively clean and frugal thing. 
when the battery is fully charged up the GTE is supposed to be able to cover up to 31 miles on electric power alone and with a fully charged battery and a tank of fuel a range of over 620 miles is said to be possible so for example you could travel from London to Paris and back without refueling there's an upfront price premium to find for plug-in hybrid motoring though that most potential owners won't want to pay despite the government's generous £5,000 grant towards the cost. Which means that most Passat buyers will want to restrict their interest to the diesel models that we've been focusing on here. Now with these variants residual values look set to be extremely strong. At least if industry monitor Cap Automotive are to be believed. Their gold book residual value forecasting tool is the industry's independent benchmark for tomorrow's second hand prices and it reckons that the Passat will retain 37.4% of its value after 3 years and 60,000 miles. Now that's really very good by segment standards, meaning that this Volkswagen will lose no more than about £13,400 of its value over 3 years. You won't be surprised to learn that this is a far better showing than you'd get with rival Mondeos and Insignias. But what might be a little more shocking though is that it actually improves on the kind of residual returns that you'd get with a comparably engined, posh, pricey, compact executive saloon. Compare this Volkswagen showing to the £15,880 loss over the same period for the equivalent Mercedes C-Class, the £16,970 loss you'd be faced with in an Audi A4, or the £17,445 loss you'd suffer in a BMW 3 Series. So you get the point. This car clings onto its value pretty well. What else? Well, I like the fact that misfueling protection is standard across the range, so you won't be able to accidentally put petrol in your diesel Passat. Now, less impressive is the three-year, 60,000-mile warranty cover, though that policy can be extended by four or five years if you want it to be. There is a choice of fixed or flexible service plans, depending on whether your car will be covering less than 10,000 miles a year. And insurance groupings are relatively affordable. Starting with 1.6 litre TDI power, you're talking group 15E, with the 2 litre TDI 150 PS variant rated at group 21E, and go for this 2 litre TDI 190 PS model, and that rating rises to 22E. While the 240 PS by TDI model is pitched at group 28E. So what have we here? A strong contender to be sure. In 8th generation form, the fastest selling Volkswagen on the planet is at last a car that grabs you in the showroom and impresses you straight off the bat. It looks much smarter than before, the interior feels a whole lot more upmarket and there are all sorts of super slick systems and features that are more like those you'd expect to find in a BMW, an Audi or a Mercedes. It drives well too, and thankfully Volkswagen hasn't tried to inject a whole lot of unnecessary sportiness across the range. The Passat was always at its best as a comfortable mile muncher, and the big steps forward that Volkswagen has made in refinement, comfort and economy make it more accomplished than ever in that regard. Now, crucially too, it continues to combine all of this with residual values that often actually improve on those delivered by premium brands. Ultimately, it is in every sense a car that knows its market. For five decades, the quality choice in the medium range Mondeo segment. It's a model that for many bridges the gap between the type of company or family car that they have to drive, something like a Mondeo, an Insignia or a Peugeot 508 and the BMW 3 Series style compact executive saloon they'd really rather have. Certainly, this 8th generation version keeps to much the same script as its predecessors, but in the process it delivers even more effectively on Volkswagen's promise of greater comfort, low running costs and a more upmarket feel. There are, it's true, more affordable, sharper handling choices in this class, but there are none that leave you with a nicer feeling when you wake up in the morning, pull the curtains and see one of these on your driveway. It's a feeling that's very Volkswagen and perfectly Passat.